see each and every one of, here, of you here with us this morning. And if you would, please go ahead and take your Bibles out and turn to 1 John, starting with chapter 1. And we're going to go as far as the Spirit will lead me. I hope to be able to make it through at least chapter 2, since the first chapter is kind of short. Uh, and once again, that's 1 John, chapter 1. Before I get started, I want to thank the ensemble. Thank you for your performances. Uh, it is much appreciated. Uh, leading us in the song and in the spirit. Uh, thank you, Brother Jimmy, for your prayer earlier. Thank you, Brother Doug, for your prayer earlier. It takes teamwork, folks. Amen. It takes teamwork. Absolutely. Not one person can do every job. It takes a village. It takes all of us. Amen. And that's one thing I can say. I'm not trying to blow smoke up nobody here at Old Union Community Church. But that's one thing I can say about this church. And I praise God for that. That everybody serves their part. Amen. They do their part. Sure. Not for their own glorification, but the glorification of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and these first two chapter, chapters of the first epistle of John here, we're going to learn the family with the Father equals fellowship. And then the fellowship will be maintained by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Without those things, we are going to be lost, folks. we got to have fellowship with the brethren. Amen. This weekend was such a blessing Amen. for me I can't speak for nobody else, but I can speak for me. It was such a blessing to see old and young alike Amen. there together, fellowshipping one with another and studying from God's Word, Amen. letting God's will have its way. Amen. God's will had its way there this weekend Amen. with the peace and the joy and the fellowship that we had one with another. I praise God for that opportunity. And during that retreat, God give me this. Says, son, you need to share this with my children. Because some folks are struggling with this. There's a lot of good information throughout the whole Bible. But God spoke to me saying, teach my children this. And we're going to dive in it before we get started. Would you all please bow your head right quick with me. Father, we come to you today giving you praise, giving you glory, giving you honor, thanking you for all the many blessings you have given us, Father. Father, we're thankful for your Son, Jesus Christ, that through him that we have propitiation for our sin, that we have salvation from our sin, that we have the opportunity to have eternal life, Father. Father, I ask you now to speak through me. Hear my Lord, send me. Allow me to take a back seat to you, Father. Use me as your vessel this very day to teach your children. Release your Holy Spirit upon each and every one that hears this message. I ask you to seal their minds and seal their hearts with this great truth you have laid for us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen. Amen. Now here in the uh, New Testament book here that we're looking at today, um, in 1 John is a letter to the community of faith. What was Brother Jimmy's word this year? It's faith. Here at Old Union Community Church, we are based on faith. Amen. And with us being based on faith, we're based on obedience as well to God's Word and to God's commandments. And hopefully we can make it that far. We're going to learn what a new commandment was written in this book in chapter 2 here. But it's really not nothing new. Amen. Especially for us who love the Lord, we already know what this commandment is. But we'll find that out here later. So let's go ahead and start with 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. And I love this verse right here. For those that, who believe in the Big Bang Theory and the bull crap that's like that right there, it says here, that which was from 
the beginning. Amen. Did you hear that? From the beginning. Which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Now the word of life is the word of God. Amen. And who is the living word of life? That's Jesus Christ. But I want to praise God we have looked upon and we have heard yesterday Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But yesterday I was sitting on the side of that lake all day. All day the water was choppy. It was real choppy. Wind blowing. With the water being choppy it leads to uncertainty. And you're uncertain. And I kind of struggled with that for a moment. I'm like, really? Uncertainty, the water is choppy. And then we were sitting there, and then all of a sudden, Donnie looks up, and here comes two bald eagles flying over, a pair of bald eagles. And it wasn't moments after that that I snapped a picture on my phone that that lake looked like a sheet of glass. That was from the beginning. The beauty of that was from the beginning. Because our Father created this life, created this world for us to view things of beauty like that. It was awesome. Uncertainty all day. And then all of a sudden, a moment of freedom come upon me when them bald eagles come over and then God showed me a sign. He said, in His creation, you have certainty, believe it or not. You do. And that certainty is Jesus Christ died for you, Amen. brothers and sisters. Amen. Jesus Christ paid that price. But we have heard that. We that believe, we have seen that. We know that. And I'm challenging you, if you have not seen that, rip them blinders off your eyes because it's all around us. It's all around us. Verse 2, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Now we're talking about Jesus Christ there. That's got to be the basis of our relationship with the Father is Jesus Christ. We've got to have that base which is the chief foundation. That is the stone that was cut not with hands but by God. That's our chief foundation. And that's what we got to have to have fellowship with the family. And I'm talking about the fellowship of God's family. Verse 3. That which we have uh, seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship. I love that word, fellowship, with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have that opportunity to have fellowship with the Creator. To have fellowship with the Savior. We have that opportunity. It's ours for the taking. And we got to, like John is doing here, we have to share that. Not only with the community of the faith, but also with the community of those that are searching to be better, to have better. Why? Because we've seen it. That's not to say that we ain't had trials and tribulations and troubles upon our journey. But we've seen it. We've seen the joy that can be had through a relationship with Jesus Christ and a relationship with the Father and the relationship of God's family. Verse 4. And these things write I unto you that your joy, that your joy may be full. Amen. Amen. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Amen. God is light and in him is no darkness. You see there? In Him, there is no darkness. In Him, there is light. 
me, the water being choppy yesterday left the uncertainty. And it left the darkness a little bit. Like, what's going on? Why has it got to be like this? Don't question that. Just know that in uncertainty, it's not of God. Because one thing's for certain. God will never leave you nor forsake you Amen. in your darkest hour, Amen. in your biggest trial, in your biggest temptation. Our Father said He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. And that's a part of like Miss Jerry's uh, lesson in Sunday school this morning. You've got to have your feet shod in preparation for that though. Amen. And the only way you can do that is to have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way that you can do that is to have fellowship with God. And our best way to have fellowship with God right now is to stay in His Word. Amen. When you wake up, stay in His Word. Amen. When you go through the day, stay in His Word. Amen. When that trial comes, go to His Word. Amen. When that temptation comes, go to His Word. Amen. He will never forsake you. He left you a God map. Come on. He left you the way. That's right. There is no temptation come upon you that is not common to man. That's it. And He will see you a way through it. He allows you to go through these temptations, but He gives you a way through it. That's right. But the only way that we can do that is to have fellowship with our Lord and Savior. Come on. To have fellowship with God. And in doing so, we have to have fellowship one with another. Amen. We can't be divided. We have to have unity. Amen. We have to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And we must do that by getting out and spreading the word of God. Amen. We got to let them know that's what's up. And doing that, we got to have our feet shod so we can go out and shine the light of Christ in the ways that we walk. Even though that path may be blocked by sawbriars, may be blocked by thistles. You got to have your feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace. That way the Father can be there to lead you. Amen. Or if it seems so hard, guess what? Then two sets of footprints are going to become one. Come on. Why? Because you have your feet shod with the Christ, with the gospel. All right, carrying on with God's word here. In Him is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie. Amen. And do not the truth. Mm -hmm. To walk in darkness, you have to deny the light. That's and right. who is the light? Right. Jesus Christ says, I am the light. Jesus Christ is the light. So if we walk in darkness, we're denying the light. Amen. That's right. And we become liars. That's some pretty harsh words from John there. <laughs> we become liars. When we walk in darkness and say that we are of the light, you can't serve manna and you can't serve God at the same time. Come on. Amen. Right. You can only serve one or the other. I would that you choose to serve God this very day. I wish you would. Amen. If you have not, I wish you would. I encourage you to. But we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light Come on. as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sins. Save one. We're all one. Save one. And that's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Come on. But all other sins can be forgiven. Amen. That's right. All other sins can be forgiven. Now how's that say there? Through the blood of Christ Jesus. So do you see a pattern here? Do you see a pattern here? There's one way to the Father. And that's through Christ Jesus. And I love this verse that we just looked at here. It says, if we walk in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Amen. Is that not glorious? Amen. To know as you are going through life, you're trying to walk in the light. You're trying to have your feet shod with a... Um, preparation of the gospel of peace. When you got that blessed breastplate of righteousness on, when you got that shield on, when you got that helmet of salvation on, 
We have fellowship one with another. Amen. We're not losing sight. Because when we have fellowship one with another, when we see a brother or sister down, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to lift them up. Don't let them stay down. You do what God has done for you. He has lifted you up through our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. You lift your brother and your sister up. You lift them up. You don't let them stay there and water in the mire. You pick them up. You let them dust their shoulder off. You show them love that was shown to you first. Because that love didn't have to be shown to you. But guess what? That love was there to be shown for you. It was there to be shown for you. But we have fellowship when we inspire each other to walk in the light. We have true fellowship. And, and there's no greater fellowship than we have with each other for one thing. The glorification of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Amen. 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 And the truth is not in us. Come on. Don't you lie to folks. Don't you lie to folks. We all have fallen short Amen. of the glory of God. Amen. And whoever says that they have it, I ask you to beware of that person. Amen. Because I just told you here in 1 John, the truth is not in them. If they tell you that they haven't sinned or that they live in a perfect life, mm. beware of that person. Mark that person. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. It ain't something that I set out to do. No, but it's like Paul said. He said, when I get up, I try my best to do my best. Come on. But it don't always happen. That's right. Amen. It's not that I set out not to succeed in trying to glorify my Father and trying to bring glory to Jesus Christ. It's just human nature. That doesn't give me the excuse though to get up and do, go on and do Come it on. every single day. Amen. Come on. I mean, Paul said, uh, shall we sin that grace may abound? God forbid that. Amen. So, you know, to have fellowship one with another, I'm not telling you to confess it before man, but you have to confess that you fall short daily. Amen. Amen. And do it so you humble yourself because God wants a humble servant. He wants a humble servant. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful, faithful, and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar. And His word is not in us. Come on. Makes God a liar. Woo! That's one Mike Daddy you don't want to call a liar because he has never Man. lied. He has never lied. Carrying on in chapter 2 here. Now we're going to see that fellowship is maintained by Christ. My little children, these things I write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Amen. Glory, glory to God, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Did you hear that? We have an advocate. Amen. It's so nice today to know that we can come to the Father oh, yes. through Jesus Christ. Amen. That we have that avenue to come to the Father. But I must warn, it is only through one way, and that's through the blood shed of Jesus Christ. That's right. And the only way that you can get through the blood shed of Jesus Christ, excuse me, is to accept His sacrifice that He paid the price on that cross. Amen. you got to accept Jesus Christ. And in doing so, we're going to carry on into this chapter and we're going to see how that will strengthen our fellowship not only with God, but with each other. And He... That's talking about Jesus Christ. He's the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole Amen. world. Right. Glory to God. The whole world. Not just me. Not just you. The whole world. 
Each and every person. He is the propitiation for you. He is the only propitiation that we have for the whole world there. It's not just for me. It's for you too, my brothers and sisters. Amen. It's for everyone. All whosoever will is for them. Verse 3, And hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. There's my word. Keep His commandments. Obedience to His commandments. you got to have faith. You've got to have obedience. Faith and works together are a whole. One without the other is dead. Amen. You can't have one without the other. Right. If you don't have faith, you're not going to have works. If you don't have works, you're not going to have faith. Because you're not going to be able to see the fruits of that. You're not all the time going to see the fruits of that. But I guarantee you, you will see it. You will know it. Amen. You will hear of it. Because why? You have brought honor to God. You have brought honor to Jesus Christ. You have made His sacrifice what it's supposed to be. You have not made it null and void. You have made it what it's supposed to be and what it's there for. So faith without works is dead. We need to keep that in mind. <coughs> he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Amen. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It tells us in the Bible we've got to test them by their fruits. And this is one yes. way to see that the love of God is in them. That's one way you can test somebody by the fruits. Because mm -hmm. they'll show you. You lay back and watch them. Come on. And they'll show you the love of God in them. In the things that they do. In the things that they say. Yep. They will show you. Will you will see. Why? Because you love the Lord and He's not going to forsake you and He's not going to suffer you to be led down a path that you don't need to go in. Come on. Although you will be tried and tempted in that, but He will be there for you. He will see you through it. He will lay a way out for you. And that way out is Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way. Amen. That way out is Jesus Christ. Verse 6. He that abideth in Him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. And again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. The true light now shining. Now what's it talking about there? It's the light of God shining through Jesus Christ. Amen. What was the thing that He done? He showed love. Even I as a sinner, He shows love to me. Because He walked that cross to Golgotha. He was nailed to that cross. Not for His sin, for mine. That's right. For yours. Verse 9, he said, He is the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasions of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. What's going on amen, amen. Ooh. I wanted to go back to Miss Jerry's Sunday school lesson this morning. You had no idea I was doing this, but you spoke of the light this morning. Second witness, God is so good. See there? God is so good. You see? Did you hear? The light of the way. You have to have that light even though you have your feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace. That demonstration this morning spoke loudly to me. You have to have the light. And we all know who the light is. Amen. And that's what I'm here today to share with you today. 
if you feel you're in darkness, if you see darkness around you, shy away from that. Because we just heard here in 1 John chapter 1, there is no darkness in Him. Only light. And in going toward the light, you know, they always saying, you know, when you're dying, you're seeing the light, there's a light coming at the end of the tunnel. <coughs> We're not talking about that light, obviously. We're talking a lot about the light that's shining throughout you that God has given you to shine the light of Christ. Amen. And to do that, we have to love. We have to love. We have to love. We have to love. Amen. We have to love. I know I keep saying that, but we got to love. Because in love, the law is perfected. The law was perfected when Jesus Christ died on that cross. Amen. We owe it all to Him Amen. to get out here and shine our light. To show the light that is given to us. That others that are in darkness can see that light. We need to spread the light of Christ. Amen. In Him there is no darkness. So I want to go back to that choppy water. God give me peace that evening, that very evening. When that thought of uncertainty come through my mind, He give me peace. He said, son, look out here now. See what my glory is? And His glory is a certainty that the good is going to be reflected in all the good that you do that the goodness of the Lord has for you. You should go out today and reflect that light and reflect that love. And that's what I'm here to do today. God loves you. God loves you so much that He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. That was God in the flesh to come to this earth and become sin and to be nailed upon that cross. That way our sins are forgiven. We no longer have to go to a priest to have our sins forgiven to be prayed for. Amen. We can go into the holiest of holies and ask for forgiveness. But there's only one way to do that. And that's by accepting the bloodshed on that cross. That Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ shed on that cross. And in accepting that blood, we must do two things. We must love and we must shine that light. And the only way to do those two things, brothers and sisters, is to stay in this right here. Amen. To stay in the Holy Word of God. That's the only way that we can achieve the joy that is set forth for us. To receive the certainty that can be in your life. Although uncertainty arises, brothers and sisters, there is one certainty. The Father goes with you. Amen. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. That's right. Amen. And there's no temptation that will come to you that is not common to man. One thing I got to tell you, our Christ, He was tempted. He was tempted sore after He fasted for 40 days of no food and no drink. He was at His weakest. Satan come to Him and tempted Him. When we are our weakness is when Satan tries to run amok in our lives. But what did Jesus Christ do? He went to God's Word. He went to God's Word. And God's Word strengthened Him that way He could take on Satan. That way He could defeat Satan. And what did He defeat Him with? God's Word. I give you God's Word today. God's Word is Accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through Him that you might have everlasting life. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? Would you all please bow your heads?